things are really starting to heat up on today's episode of Tool Review Tuesday. So let's get started. Roll the intro. Check it out, this is the cleaning sponge that goes in the Ryobi P3100 solder station. This is hot, so let me put that in here. And we're going to let it cool down now. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you a few soldering tips, but mostly I'm gonna show you how this works right here. This is actually a tool only, so the battery that I'm using, this is the 18 volt, six amp hour battery. This one will give you a, a long run time. If you don't have a battery for this, it's okay. You could actually plug a cord, an extension cord in there and run it that way too. But if you wanna take this with you, let's say you have like a trailer that you're rewiring or a boat or something like that, you don't have to run a cord all the way to it. Just put a battery in and you're good to go. I'm gonna show you what comes with this right here. So it's not the battery, but all this right here. So the tip that came in the box was the spine point tip right there. That's probably for doing like some circuitry work, something really small. But I switched it out with this tip right here. I seem to use this more often. It's more like a chisel tip or a blunt tip. I don't know if you can see that better. I need to clean a little bit off. I noticed after the last time that I used it that I need to wipe it on that sponge right there. So let me show you how you get started with this right here. So I'm gonna put the battery in last because I don't wanna put any power or any heat to that tip right there. We don't wanna take a chance of things heating up. So we'll do that right when we're about ready to get started. Okay, first we gotta put a little bit of water in this sponge right here. You can see how I use the other side. So when you're soldering, they recommend to take this and wipe it off when you're done using it each time on the sponge that removes the oxidation off the tip. So let's put some water in here first. I was trying to think back of when I first inherited a soldering gun from a relative. I'm pretty sure it was about the age when I was learning how to drive or had my first car. And I remember going through the JC Whitney catalog. If you guys have ever gone through that and ordered something, put a comment down below. That was something that I was always getting in the mail and looking through, ordering different things. So like a stereo system was like one of the important things. Equalizers. Uh, I always wanted to get some bass things in the back. Um, those horns that you could hook up to a CB to like play music or like animal sounds or something. I always, those intrigue me. I think I, I, I did buy a bullhorn. I remember goofing around with one of those. And I had a car that didn't have a third brake light yet. That was back, I think around 80. When did they put that third brake light in? So I recall installing one of those on an older car. So there's always been a lot of reasons to have a soldering gun for doing wiring. And then as I got older, owning a trailer, rewiring it, especially like with the uh, moisture that could get in with the trailer, definitely you need to solder that. And then also I recommend putting heat shrink tubing over it as well as boating too. I own a few different boats and rewired some different things. So the soldering gun is gonna really come in handy for many things. The sun just set recently, so we're going to, have to move inside to get some better lighting. So as we go inside, we're going to take about 15 to 20 seconds, and I'll show you a close-up of all the different angles of this right here. Check out that sunset. So before we get started turning this on, a couple of safety tips I want to point out. It's a good idea to have safety glasses because if there's any splattering, you don't want it going in your eye. And then another thing is to make sure you have a well ventilated area. So you might be able to hear a fan over there that's blowing the air out. So that's something else I recommend. And then there's a few different types of solder. One is this right here. 
This is the lead free. So then the other type of electrical solder is this right here. This has lead in it. So it's a good idea when you're done touching this stuff to wash your hands and then also just kind of wash or wipe down the work area where you're at. All right, so now let's put this to the test and then when I'm done, I'll go over some of the specs that you'll see with this so you know exactly what to expect. There, we've got a full charge. Let's start out by putting the battery in. I prefer to be cordless, so we're gonna just demonstrate how that works. But I did try the extension cord instead and it works exactly the same. Okay, so what we're gonna do, push that to turn it on. Then I'm gonna turn the dial all the way up. I just prefer with the type of soldering that I'm doing, having that cranked up all the way. So it takes about 90 seconds for this to heat up. And then you can probably, you might see a little bit of smoke coming off of it, or you might even smell it as it's heating up. That way, you know, it's ready to go. But this will actually turn green when it's fully heated. So for now, we're just gonna store it right in that coil right there. And then besides wearing safety glasses, another thing I recommend is having a work surface that's not gonna get damaged underneath. So I happen to have this silicone mat right here. This is made by Rockler. I highly recommend this. The last time I was at the Rockler store, I picked this up right here, and it's one of the best things that I bought. It just protects the surface right here. So if anything hot drips on the silicone, I'll be good. All right, so what we have is some 14 white right here. So I'm gonna use these strippers. I really like these right here. These are by Milwaukee, so you just line that up. 14, which I'm gonna take a little more off than that. Strip the ends, same here. Do it one more time. One thing you're gonna to wanna to consider is whether or not you need to use heat shrink tubing. So you're gonna to wanna to find something that's really close to the sides. It doesn't have a lot of play. So I'm gonna go with the 3 16 tubing. I think that's gonna shrink down over that good enough. So the method I typically use is to wrap them together like this. You gotta be careful at the end so you don't poke yourself with it. That seems to look pretty close right there. And if you are using heat shrink tubing, make sure you put that on first. I'm just using a couple scrap pieces so I can easily just slide it over the end. They make a really cool tool as alligator clips for hanging onto your wire. Since I don't have that, I'm gonna do something makeshift. I have these splitting wedges right here. These are aluminum. So what I'm gonna do is put some frog tape on here to hold the wires down. The next thing we're gonna do is put some flux on there. If you don't see flux around the soldering stuff, like the soldering tools, go in the plumbing section, you'll find it there. So the reason that you use flux is it removes the oxidized metals from the surface that needs to be soldered. It also seals out the air, which prevents further oxidation. And then it facilitates amalgamation which improves the wetting characteristics of the liquid solder. So it just helps to draw the solder all the way through that and give you a really solid connection. And if you're doing electrical solder, there are several different varieties. This is the leaded solder. These two right here are lead free. This is a real fine one right here for really light duty work. This one's a little bit heavier. But I prefer to use this right here for this project. Some people will put solder on here and then rub it across, but that's not the best way to do it. You're gonna to wanna to heat it from down below. So you know this is hot if you can hear a little sizzling. See a little smoke right there. So that's heating up this copper wire right here. So I might just get it to start, just touch a little bit, put a little on the bottom. Okay, now check this out. This is heating up, it's drawing it into it. Yeah, now this is why, like right here, when it just melts like a hot, hot butter right into it. There. And then when you're done, it's a good idea to take the tip to the wet sponge to get that oxidation off. So that sponge is going to get a little dirty. You'll see like some little shavings on it. That just helps prepare the tip for the next one. All right, so let's take a close look and see what this solder joint looks like. All right, check that out. That is fully drawn in all the way there. 
So after I let this cool for a few minutes, I can really pull on this and it will not separate. So something we can do to protect this joint and even strengthen it is to put this heat shrink tubing over it. That's right in the center. And then I prefer using a torch lighter like this right here. And then just kind of start in the center and then work your way out. I'm getting a little low on fuel in here, but it definitely has enough to shrink this. So it's been about five minutes now since I made this connection right here. So I'll just show you how strong it is. <laughs> ah, trying to, it will not pull apart. So that is the way to connect two wires. So after you solder something together, you pretty much have three alternatives for covering it. You can use heat shrink tubing, you could use liquid electrical tape, which I like, or if you're just doing speaker wires and it's something that's not gonna have any tension on it, you could just use regular electrical tape like this right here. So I'm just curious, what method do you like to use to cover up your solder connections? Let's just take a quick look at the box right here so I can give you all the accurate specs of this. 45 watt hybrid soldering station. The temperature control allows you to adjust and maintain the desired temperature. Hybrid technology, so you can have unlimited runtime if you use a extension cord. Heats up to 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Has an iron holder for safe and convenient storage. Has an LED indicator so you know when the tip is hot. Has onboard tip and sponge storage. Then right there it has a grounding loop feature for use with an ESD safe mat for small electronics work. So that's it right there. So it's included in this kit right here, a 45 watt hybrid soldering station, a fine point tip, chisel tip, solder coil, tip cleaning sponge, and operator's manual. 18 volt battery, power output, 45 watts, maximum temperature 900 degrees Fahrenheit, weight 2.5 pounds. And then check this out right here as a three year warranty. All right, so if you would like to learn more about this soldering station right here, I'll have a link down below to the Home Depot website, and there you can read all the reviews. I know somewhere between like 80 to 100 people have reviewed this right here, and it has an awesome rating, something like 4.8 stars. You know, when I first seen this item right here, I really wasn't sure that a battery would work as well as plugging it in, but I was proven wrong. This works amazing. Just read the reviews. So my goal of this video is to help you guys out to see if this tool is right for you. So if you're considering the purchase of it, I'm hoping that I was able to put it through the test enough so you can see how well it performs. And if you have any questions, something I left out, please put them down below, I'll be happy to answer. And if you find this video review interesting, informative and helpful, please give it a thumbs up and help support my channel. That's it friends, thanks for watching. See you next time.